Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's performance here in Palo Alto. We're bringing in guests from all around the world, watch parties all around the world. I'm John Furrier, your host with Dave Vellante. Jim Comstock is here, product manager for IBM Flat Systems. Jim, great to see you. We heard some great rave reviews from customers and the watch parties all around the world bringing the energy into this program. Thanks for coming in. Hey, excited to be here. So big announcement, AI ops, new innovations in the flash system portfolio. Give us the update on the perspective. What, what is attractive? What's, what's, why, why is this so hot in this highly competitive environment? Give us a quick take. So let's talk about the 5300. So that's, you saw the excitement that, that we, we developed around the world uh, based around our 5200 product. And our 5300 is the next generation of that uh, exciting platform. One U, dense, high performance, efficient, uh, data resilient, um, and leverages intelligent modernization to deliver more cloud-like op cloud -like operations in today's modern environment. So we're really excited about it. Um, we can talk about the details in terms of performance improvements. We're uh, right now it sits at about 400 IOPS a second for a one U box with a petabyte of storage behind it. It's very, um, you know, two or three uh, uh, to one data reduction rates um, on real live workload, 73 read write ratios. I think Dave mentioned it earlier. So really great performance, high sequential throughput performance. You combine that with our data resilience capability with FCM4 and, and ransomware threat detection on our ability to detect threats uh, fast and recover from them fast, which is really important. You hear a lot of people talk about cyber resiliency and, and protecting data, but IBM is leading the way in really looking at IOs as they come in and detecting changes. And you're going to hear more about that from Andy Walls um, our, our fellow and CTO for storage uh, in, later in this, this environment. But we think we got a great product, attractively priced, efficient, uh, data resilient, all the enterprise class features you need in today's world. Yeah, I, we heard the props from the customer. I mean, they basically said <laughs> off the cuff, so glad it's a one you. Uh, Dave, we've heard, this is a huge density, just the form factor is a big part of it. Well, it's interesting, Jim. I mean, first of all, it's good to see you again. You and I have been at this a long time. And just to note the changes, I love the conversation today. We even live in this box-centric world where we're moving on. Of course, you know, Flash completely changed the game and you guys have innovated there. But some of these things you're talking about, you know, the compression ratios and being able to do the threat detection inside these, these systems, that was impossible years ago. I wonder if you could just talk, double click on some of the features and capabilities that you guys have enabled that allow you to do those types of things? Yeah, really interesting question. So uh, yeah, I do remember the 3390 days, yeah. Dave, and I looked at it with the two gigabit, uh, two gigabyte capacity of those device, devices way back then, we've come a long way. So um, if you look at our architecture, computational storage and what we've done in that space with QLC and making it tier zero, or enterprise class, and then leveraging the capabilities on top of that. So initially encryption, bringing in compression, and then ransomware threat detection offloaded our core CPUs that are running in the controllers. So that's one big architectural change that leveraged Flash and our ability to offload the computational storage, which we all, are requirements of storage, which we all need uh, is required to deliver a set of data services whether that's replication um, or, or, or other features that, that may, need, may be needed in that world. Um, snapshotting, for instance, is a great, great capability. Say, you know, immutable copies. If you look at where we're going is we're trying to make that storage virtualization stack as efficient now, leveraging that off, uh, offloading capability. That allows us to store more copies because if you think of the world today, you're going to need to store more copies to protect yourself in case of attack. That's an important aspect. You want to be able to do, do things, replicate and create HA pairs. So what we've done with Storage Virtualized is enable resiliency, not just from ransomware attacks, but also delivering async, synchronous, high availability synchronous, so business continuity. We're introducing three-side capability into the system as well. And so you're bringing all those capabilities in an efficient way because we've offloaded a lot of the core low level functionality to the devices themselves. Is, is now talk about flash grid, if you would. Explain it, we, sure. you know, you hear the term grid a lot and it can be interpreted a lot of different ways. What does it mean here and how does it, I'm really interested in the three site capability and other features that it enables. 
Yeah, so so think of, we, we've been on this journey around our replication over the last couple of years, and we started with policy-based replication, synchronous replication that was tied to, to leveraging policies to simplify the operational aspect. Because we all saw where the world was going many years ago as, as cloud came in and how you know infrastructure was viewed in that sense. And so we want to make the operation of our infrastructure transparent. And so we started on that journey with just synchronous replication and leverage policies to make it very simple. Then we expanded to HA capabilities to do synchronous HA, keep multiple sites up. Now what FlashGrid allows us to do is build a, a federation of independent systems. So they're not clustered in the traditional way and in, in that they're independent. They're all managed independent, but storage insights allows us then to be able to view what's going on across those systems and leverages the challenge when you have multiple systems. And so with the, the, the grid concept, that allows us to start introducing more advanced operational capabilities into the world around that um, use case. Think of data mobility, migration we talked about when you go back to assurance, the ability to keep your systems up to date that will need non-disruptive capabilities, just like in the in the cloud today, where people we know infrastructure managers are moving things around. We just don't see it if you're using it at the higher level. We're trying to replicate that capability on prem. How is the AI wave impacting you guys? Obviously, the consumption side we heard from really easy yeah. to, to to consume, deploy, manage. Uh, we hear see the performance, the one U box kudos from customers. Obviously, that's good from a capacity standpoint. But the AI game is changing, clustered systems, me people putting things together. How is that changing storage and storage management? So I think there's three ways. Um, I think it's changing the economics. And we talked about that, Dennis talked about that. Everybody wants their ship. They got fixed budget. I think Dave, you were talking about it in the early intros. There's fixed budgets and where's those budget shifts going to come from? That's why we initially focused or, or didn't initially, our key driver has been efficiency. And so, that allows budgets to be managed in storage in a way that couldn't be done in the past, yet leveraging IBM technology. I think secondly, AI is transforming how people want to operate. New generations are coming and that they're going to be used to using AI generated tools and capabilities to interact with their environments, which means there's going to be different approaches of how you manage your on-prem environment. And then third, we're using it as a tool or capability within our systems ourselves. So you can, we use AI concepts within our FCM capability. We leverage it within our storage virtualized stack and within storage insights. And when you look at storage insights, you can see AI coming into new ways of, of the user experience. Think of generative AI. I want to go in and ask the, the, the system a question and it will give me answers, not me having to look at a variety of graphs. Think of education, how people learn from an administration perspective is going to change. They want to be self-taught as they go. Think of reporting, intelligent reporting, debug. I just went through debugging my Comcast system and it walked me through a set of steps as it was debugging. These are all capabilities. Then you get into capacity planning, optimization, proactive support, things we also do today. And then how do you integrate these different brains, these AI brains? I view storage lifecycle or AI or storage insight as our storage lifecycle platform. That's going to be our brain for our storage infrastructure. And that's going to have to integrate with other brains around the world, whether it's Defender from a uh, backup perspective, it could be security or other environments like VMware or things like that. So we see it greatly affecting our uh, capabilities in terms of where storage is going. And we think IBM is well positioned across the board to lead in this space. And you know, Jim, we had the great AI awakening in November, 2022, but I'm curious as to how we should think about AI. You've got, I sometimes call it legacy AI, it's not the right term, but, but traditional machine learning uh, and there's a lot of things that you can do with that, uh, you know, inside of, of the array. And then there's generative AI. How should we think about the complementary nature of, of those two technologies and where do they fit? So, I th so it's interesting. I think it fits in two ways. I think the generative AI really plays into the operational mindset of how admins want to deal or any of us want to deal when we're trying to operate things. And generative AI can help in that world, making it smarter. Let's say I have a question about how I need to do something. I think generative AI plays in that world. 
Um, and I think then you get into the machine learning where you're trying, especially let's say ransomware threat detection, where you're trying to leverage learning, reinforcement learnings as we're throwing threats out, for example, we want to feed that learning back into the system to make it smarter. So I think it's really a combination and depending on which use case you're looking at uh, within the system. Now, of course, the storage assurance is really interesting because you, you're going to have this storage for your life. I love that, that sort of tagline. How should we think about the 5300 compared to the 5200? I mean, we're taking advantage of Moore's law and more, the combinatorial factors today of you know, GPU and CPU and NPU and ASICs. It's, it's off the charts in terms of, of the performance curves. What can customers expect when they, they go from 5200 to 5300? So when you're going from a 52 to 53, you're going to get a boost in performance, obviously, um, from where we were uh, with the 5200. We've also introduced, since the introduction of the 5200, FCM4 with ransomware threat detection built in. So there's another added level of, uh, of security, data resilience built in. Um, and your, the, the 52, 53, 73, 95, our whole platform runs on our single code base. So the 53 is taking advantage of the latest capabilities that we're introducing on our software stack, things like flash grid, uh, things like three site replication. All that functionality is now available for the 53 and it drifts up at the higher end as well. Okay, and so this, this notion of using primary storage as the first point of protection is really interesting to me. I mean, a lot of people are you know, thinking about, okay, I'm going to recover from some kind of offsite. You've got that capability, but this is new uh, that you actually have the technology to be able to detect. I read, I think you guys were <laughs> checking every like literally two seconds for anomalies. I wonder if you could just double click on that a little bit. Yeah, and you'll hear more from Andy Walls on this. So the beauty of computational storage or the FCMs is that we can, operate on IOs as they're going through the FCM. So we're not introducing any kind of latency within that capability in the IO path, which is really cool. That allows us to then process that information, that, those telemetry streams, and we'll get into that as we look at potential changes in the data, entropy and beyond that to, to highlight those, those threats. So I think when you really look at, at, at what we can do in this space, uh, we're really changing the game. And um, it's been interesting over the last few years, storage admins have tended, in my view, kind of hid down underneath. It's all, it's all about protecting the wall. But in reality, everybody is after the crown jewels. And as a mission critical, low latency, primary block storage device, we own the mission critical assets of many companies. And so we take security. Think of RAS day. Remember, and John, remember the world, world of RAS, right? That's the storage. You never lose data. You never lose access to data. And I think now with security, it becomes another important aspect of, of delivering on the functionality that storage systems need in this space. Yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's the joke is why do bank robbers rob the bank? Because that's where the money is. Data is the cheese. Everyone wants the data. They want to go after the storage. That's been a big part of it. My final question for you is: you mentioned the brains and connecting to other storage systems. How are you looking at the the orchestration layer between these domains? What is the key um, technology there, and how has it helped the new modern admin and or whether if they're operating the storage or infrastructure at that matter, because it's going to be self, uh, self-service. What's that well, orchestration sir. layer look like and how's those brains connecting with the, the storage systems cross domain? Yeah, so, so I think initially, you know, we're building out the storage life cycle, uh, storage life cycle platform for IBM. And, and that allows us to take telemetry streams and then build that intelligence base around that and the generative AI capabilities, the machine learning, uh, the time series analysis modeling that's required to really create the recommendations um, and optimizations that our customers want. They don't want to spend the time having to noodle through all the data. They want to get guidance and where to go. And that's what we're building out with Storage Insights. Now, when you go and look at how that then gets integrated across other domains, that's where we have strong REST APIs in integration of alerting. So if we can detect an alert really fast, for example, how do you drive that orchestration? You have to go push that to an admin, the security admin or your storage admin. Now, orchestration is an interesting thing because you, you need to build the scripts to be able to orchestrate some of these things. And so for Ansible, 
is our, our key way to do that. We've had over 100,000 downloads of Ansible's and scripting. So we're starting to see our users adopt ways of automating themselves and starting to orchestrate things. So when you start seeing their ability to automate some of these tasks, with what we're doing and building in the brains, you can start seeing us getting to that orchestration point in the future. So storage insights is like the escape key. Instead of an element manager, you're now sort of coming up at a higher level and you have a much wider observation space, right? Yeah. You got it, right? Because that's the challenge is how do I deal with multiple systems? Think of multiple locations across the globe, right? IBM is a global company. You've got data uh, sovereignty issues, you've got compliance issues. All those are going to be needed uh, to be looked at from an SLA perspective. And that's where Storage Insights comes uh, to bear for us is that would be our management platform to, to uh, track SLAs. And, and manage against those. Easy, easy to consume, easy to manage. Jim, thanks for coming on. AI ops is being redefined, future ready, these innovations with Flash System, 5300 announcement. Congratulations. Thank you, you guys. All right, thanks, thanks for coming on theCUBE, appreciate it. Okay, up next, keeping the program going, we're going to hear from Craig next. He's going to come on. Craig McKenna, VP of Storage Ecosystem, Sales IBM Technology. We'll be right back after this short break. <laughs>